What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today I am here with my best bud Houston. Hey. Um, today I'm going to be doing a fly tying demo. Um, for most of y'all who don't know, fly tying is where you take a thin cordage and tie different materials onto the shank of the hook. Now this might sound really weird, but if you hold on here, I actually have some flies I was tying for a friend. Now, if you can see this, um, it's supposed to be a crab. You're being I used some EP fibers, and what it does is it's going to sink down just kind of slowly and hit the bottom, and then you're just going to jig it up. Um, but I tied this thin cordage. You got your material tied onto the shank of a hook. You got your eyes. It's a fly. We might have to cut that out. The materials I'm going to use for this fly, I'm going to start off with a size number two must-add hook. Now this one is chemically sharpened to perfection. Now that's what I love about these. As soon as I start stripping on the hook and yank when I set the hook into the fish's mouth, it pokes right through like butter. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Danville 210 denier wax thread. I'm just gonna start it at the really far, like this eye of the hook. I'm just gonna start wrapping this in. And I'm just going to wrap back, and I don't want to wrap too far. I want to wrap about fourth of the hook. Okay, first I need to loosen this up just a little. So, break my thread, because that would be very unwanted. But I want to just build up a little bit of thread right here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this tab. So I do not need the tab. After this, you're going to take these brass beads. Now, these are like the... Some little small brass beads you have hanging off your old ceiling fan, that kind of stuff. That's what this is. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cut two of these off, linked together. Okay? Now once you, you want to set these on the hook sideways, you want to set these on the hook slanted. Okay? Sideways, whatever you want to say. Now you just want to take a couple wraps and over it, make sure you have it on, and then you just want to wrap in one direction. You want to wrap away from you. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to reach over, kind of straight. You want to straighten this out just a little bit, and you're just going to take a couple more wraps. And then after that, you want to take a couple wraps under it just to make sure that that hook, the eyes on the hook do not move at all. Because the more they move, the more damage they are going to cause to your thread, which means the less you're going to be able to use your fly before it breaks. Now after this, I'm going to take no more than half a pencil's width, but I'm going to use just a little bit less, and what this is, is chartreuse deer tail. Now this gives your fly a really good presentation under the water. It's really simple to use this. You, all you do is cut it off. You pull out your shorter strands from your longer ones, so it doesn't give it too much body when you're tying it in. Next thing you want to do is you want to take your scissors and you just want to cut this off dead even because you don't want there to be a big mess on your fly okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna figure out how long i want my fly to be now i want this to be thin but kind of long so i want it to be about this long about two or three times the length of my hook so i'm just gonna set this right on top of the eyes and i come right up to the front of the eyes i'm gonna make two loose wraps I'm going to cinch down, and I'm going to keep making those wraps. Now, I want to make sure this is good and tight. Okay, now I'm going to come back behind the eyes from under, and I'm going to take another wrap on this deer hair. Now, I'm going to pull up on the deer tail as I wrap back. Now, your wraps do not have to be neat, but I want to pull up on this to make sure that it stays on the top of the hook. I want to wrap back just before the bend of the hook. Okay. Now I want to wrap all the way forward. I kind of want to make this neat now as it come up. Um, it doesn't have to be too neat though because even if your fly isn't neat, that doesn't mean it's not going to catch the fish. And in the end, that's what you're trying to do is catch the fish. Okay, so I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to take all this excess deer hair on the front and I'm just going to snip that off. I'm going to come around with my arrow point scissors from Dr. Slick and I am just going to cut all that off because I don't need it anymore because I have my deer tails secured 
so once I get all this trimmed up what I can do is I can come back up here I could just take a couple wraps over this just to make sure it's all tied on tied in and make it look nice and neat next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna take some of my crystal flash now I'm gonna take more strands than recommended I'm probably gonna take six strands now I'm gonna be folding these in half which means I'm gonna end up with 12 strands in total or six on each side now I just want to lay this down right here in the middle of it and I'm gonna take one wrap over it and what this one wrap is going to do is it's going to allow me to even it out but also pull back on each side to make sure that they're both even on each side and then all I can do is just wrap over these to make sure that they're all secured on both sides and it, all this does is it makes it easier than tying in separate strands for each side it also makes it stronger too because you're having everything connected so it's not going to slip out of your tying as easy now this is about the last thing I'm going to add on to this fly before I finish it up and this is going to be some white deer tail um, now this seems like a pretty normal deer compared to the other one I really do not know where they find deer with that kind of color hair but I guess they got it from the North Pole or something maybe they borrowed it from Santa Claus but um, once they find once I find out where they come from I'll let you know when unicorns can fly you know and that'll be a sight to see Ooh, even better I'll let you know when pigs can fly because I want to see that that'll be like the next best thing to hunter's dream yeah it'll be the hunter's dream heck it'll be flying bacon it'll be like dove hunting but better you shoot them you clean them and now you got bacon from the sky yeah. it'll literally be raining bacon Ooh, that'd be nice. Okay, so after I've tied in my crystal flash, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this white deer tail, deer tail, deer tail. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch it with my left hand, and I'm just going to slide it back onto this hook. Now, I want to tie this in behind the eye, the two eyes on the fly, and I'm just going to tie this down really good. Like, I want this to be tight. Of course, I'm going to put some cement on it but I want to make sure this is as Good. secure as possible because if the cement comes out for some weird reason yeah that's exactly right if the cement comes out then you want to make sure that you still have a good tying to make sure that your fly is usable because mm -hmm. sometimes when I go out fishing I do not bring that many flies with me so I want to make sure that my flies are as reliable as possible and make sure you know how to use them properly so you don't injure yourself. Yeah. This um, would be a given. And when you're making these, don't get poked by the end of the hook. Eh, yeah, that happens, though. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my whip finisher. Now, you really don't need a whip finisher, but a whip finisher just makes it a lot quicker to tie off your fly. Really, you can use any knot you want. Um, whip finisher, all that does is does multiple half hitches over each other. So all you do is you make a little triangle like this you line it up where you want you go one two three four five push forward and there you go you just got a five way half -inch. now that ties it off really well you can fish with it right now i really don't recommend it because your fly is going to fall apart with fish biting on it um even bluegill will end up tearing up a fly like this so i really recommend using head cement um head cement i'm using right now is you loons thin clear uv cement um i really like the uv cement i just hit it with the uv light for a couple of seconds it's, it's, it's really hard yeah it's not sponsored but boy do i wish so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna dabble this along where my knot was on the front of this hook here i just want to dabble it along make sure i have a nice thin coat over it i want to put a thin coat back here where i said i wanted to build up some line here to hold everything in I just want to dabble this head cement just about wherever I see cord now you don't have to do it this much I just like to make sure that my flies are strong okay once I've got all this done 
all you do is take your UV head cement light and you shine it on it for a couple seconds. Now this is like, kind of looks trippy with my eyes. It kind of makes everything look blurry. Just because what's happening is when the light hits it, it oh, wow. causes it to warm up really fast. It looks like and that a halo. causes it to... It almost looks like a halo. Yeah, it kind of does. It causes it to warm up really fast and cement in like 10 seconds. So it is going to be warm after you cement it if you do use a UV head cement. Now, should be just about done in a couple more seconds because I did put a lot more on than recommended. Would it still like dry without the light? Um, yeah. So this, no matter what, is going to continue curing until it's done curing. Okay, so it's cured right now. Wonderful fly. Um, I could go fish with this right now. Probably will go fishing with it sooner or later, maybe tomorrow or the day after for some bass, maybe some redfish. Um, but perfect, perfectly good fly right now. You're going to tie it on just like this. It's going to sit just like this in the water. You're going to want to jig a fly like this up and down off the bottom, or you could swim jig it kind of like stripped really slowly but constant and then do some hard jerks in between. Um, wonderful fly. I want to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe. Turn on those notifications. Please hit that thumbs up.